on our social media like Facebook, YouTube, Channel 98, and Red de Adventistas, Televisión de Belize, and Faith FM, we want to welcome you. The topic for tonight is, it's more than this. So stay tuned, stay with us, like and share our page. And now, we will continue with our worship with the praise. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It's time for us where we lift our voices in harmony as we sing praises to God. Our first song tonight is going to be, give me that old time religion.
fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine.
people of God say? Amen. Amen. I want to remind you that you can place your prayer request in the comments and also you can also message us privately via WhatsApp. Uh, we have a prayer line 613-9351. 613-9351. And also those, all those who are uh, here and uh, joining us live tonight here at Birdsell, we want to also um, ask you to write your prayer requests. You could get um, paper and pencil from our sister Amy and sister, uh, the ladies at the, at the desk. Write your prayer requests and put it in the prayer box, okay? So that the prayer warriors can pray over these names and, and these requests. Let us all stand as we ask for divine intervention and guidance tonight. Our great God, our loving Father, we thank you first of all for life and for your grace and mercy that you shed upon us every single day. Thank you, dear God, for the victory that you have given us just by being here present. You show us, dear God, that it is possible to be able to gain the victory. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who has led us thus far. Thank you for all those who have made it possible for us to be here we thank you, Father, for this place, the Birdsall uh, Auditorium. We also thank you for all the viewers that continue to share this program. We pray for all those who have been baptized and all those who are uh, about to be baptized on Saturday, this Sabbath morning. We pray, Father, that you may continue to help them to, to go through as they begin their, their Christian journey. We pray that you may Give them the strength that they need and help them to increase in knowledge and faith in you. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be again here um, broadcasting through uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Channel 98, and all different uh, platforms. We pray that you may take full control of every single being and especially of your manservant who will be bringing the message, Pastor Campbell. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Oh, victory in Jesus. I almost wanted to sing, but I will leave that to our praise team. The privilege is mine to welcome each and every one of you tonight. Let me see the hands of those who are visiting with us for the first time. Amen. Let me see the hands of our regular members. Amen. Can you just wave, 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 wave. Amen. Happy Sabbath and may God continue to bless you. I want to ask a question. If you are happy tonight, can you say amen? Are you happy tonight? Amen. If you are married, are you happy tonight? If you are single, are you happy tonight? Amen. May God continue to be glorified as we worship him. Worship him. Uh, as we go through the remainder of this series. And I just want to take this time out to also welcome our online viewers, those tuned in on YouTube, Facebook, Channel 98, and our Spanish-speaking viewers. We are happy that you are here. I want to share some uh, comments coming from those who are watching from Texas. Miss Ina, she says, happy Sabbath. We have uh, Mr. Coleman who says, may God give the preacher power to present the message tonight. So by God's grace, let us continue to enjoy this, his holy Sabbath day of rest. Amen. Good night, Good night once again, everybody. And I'm happy to... 
Here in Sister Lira said, are the married people here happy and have single people here happy? That's good, that's good. Tonight the topic is the rewarder here and after. In the word of God, we find a beautiful description of a happy home and a woman who presides over it. Her children are raised up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. So we men, we should be praising the wife. What greater commendation can be desired by the mistress of a home than that which is her expressed, which is here expressed, sorry. If she is a true wife and mother, looks to God for her strength and comfort, and in wisdom and fear, seeks to do her daily duty, she will bind her husband and her heart and see her children come into maturity. Honorable men and women having moral stamina to follow the example of their mother. So if the mothers are doing what God has ordained them to do, we're going to be having real men and real women of our society, not just for themselves, but to, uh, in, uh, in honor, and, honor and service to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless you all. God's love, a cheerful giver. And this is the time to give an offering of love. So while the ushers move on, we will give our offer of love. One more thing. If you need tied envelope, you can address yourself to the ushers. They can give you your tied envelope so you can prepare your tied and offering to bring them tomorrow while we're here for the worship um, tomorrow morning. For those who are at home and they have planned to come tomorrow morning also, if you have your tithe and offering, prepare them and bring them tomorrow to this place. And meanwhile, we will have a special presentation by Sister Jada Robinson. <laughs> It is a pleasure to have all of you with us. And I know that you don't know something that I know. Do you want to know what I know? Let me tell you something. The only way for you to receive a diploma, yes, for, for attending these meetings, is if you have registered for our healthy and happy courses. This 
is an informative health and Bible course that will help you to better understand how to take care of your health. It's, they are really seven easy lessons. And so all you need to do is you need to go to the booth at the back, all right, that I believe it says Bible course, and register. You'll be given a lesson each night. And at the end of these meetings, we will be giving a diploma to everyone who complete the lessons. So you make sure you go and you get yours. I also want you all to be reminded that tomorrow morning, the buses will be running at 8.30 a.m. Because at 9 o'clock, this place is going to explode with praise, with thanksgiving, with testimonies, and with another powerful message from evangelist David M. Campbell. You want to be here. You want to, and you don't want to come alone. You want to bring along your friends. And for those who are viewing online, you can also register for these lessons, and you will also receive your diploma or certificate. So friends, let us prepare ourselves tonight to receive another message from evangelist David M. Campbell. But right, right now, I invite you to stand because it's time for us to sing our team song. So we're going to join the praise team for that right now. And I just want you guys to know that it's our one and only pastor, um, David M. Campbell, that wrote this team song himself. Hope beyond. Trouble on the floor, searching for the meaning that was told to me of all. With no way to go, I find myself crying out for more. Hope beyond, in a world that's full of sorrows. Hope beyond, but surely comes tomorrow. Hope beyond. It's a chance to turn it around And you will get well done Hope beyond In a world that's full of sorrows Hope beyond A joy that comes tomorrow Hope beyond Hope beyond Thank you again that every night we reach at this place, we can hear this wonderful theme song telling us there's hope beyond this world, that there's a better day coming by and by. And so we are inviting you, Lord, to just take our minds and our thoughts a little off this earth and focus on what is before us. You said the future is sure when we stand and your word. And so I ask, Lord, that you would bless us tonight as we exalt your name, 
bless all our visiting friends and our members that have been here every night and those who are listening and Faith FM and those who are watching us live and ATN, uh, YouTube and Facebook. Bless us now we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. You may be seated again. I want to welcome all of you and we thank you all for coming out this evening despite the rain. You are here. Amen. And I know more people are coming and those who are watching us online, we want to thank you very much for, uh, for, for, for stucking out because I know you could have been watching something else, but you are watching us and you're listening to us and we just want to thank you very much. I want to welcome all those who are coming for the first time. I noticed I saw some of my members all the way from Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, they like to play and they like to sing. I, I saw Elder Dollard somewhere. Elder Dollard is right around the back there. I want to welcome you, Elder. I want to welcome, uh, yeah, is that Brother JR, right? The Elder JR. And we have uh, Brother Aiden. Welcome. Who else came from Kaya? And the wives. All right. We want to welcome you all. Thank you very much. When I, 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 I feel so good when I saw them. You know, I felt wonderful. And I just want to thank you very much for uh, your support for this evening. And so again, I want to welcome back all those who have given their all to Jesus in baptism yesterday. It was yesterday. Yes, some got baptized yesterday. And some were baptized on Wednesday night. I want to thank you very much. And I noticed the light is over on that side. So it's simply me. We're going to be having baptism service tonight. Okay, all right. So, and, and those are going to be baptized for this evening. I, I, I want to uh, give it a title of what we're going to be talking about this evening. It's more than a day. It's more than a what? And I, uh, for this you need, now, I don't know how many of you know the link. We just don't want you to stay home, but if you, if you, if you want to receive the link and you want to send it to someone, I, I, what is the link, by the way? I know I have the link. You just have to go on ATN uh, Facebook, yeah, and, I, I, and you can see it right there, and you can send it to somebody, send it to a friend. I've been sending these link, uh, the link almost every evening to as many as, and my contact, and so I want you to do all of that also. It's more than a day. So get out your pencil and, and your paper, and we are going to be going through what we have here this evening. Genesis chapter, okay, I'm not up. Let me see if I make the contact uh, with you. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. You may have to use your Bible for tonight. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Let me say it again. In the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth. Who did it? Who did it, everybody? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's what the Bible says. He did it on his own. Didn't need any help from anyone. And no one can claim earth as theirs because God was the one that did it. We are, we are worrying about what Russia and America and all the rest of them with their nuclear bomb are planning to do. But they cannot destroy this earth because they did not create this earth. It was created by God. Give him a amen out there. It was created by God. In the beginning, God did that. Are you listening to me out there? And then we are reminded way down in the final, the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6, we are reminded of what God did in the beginning when John wrote these words, and I read to you, John 14 and verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the what? On the earth and to every kindred, or every nation and kindred and tongue and people. John is reminding those who are claiming earth as theirs, they can plan where you can go, uh, they even have, they even tell you how far you can go in the sea because part of it belongs to them. They can tell you there's no fly zone right here because certain place in the, in the sky belong to them. 
But I don't want to remind these people that you don't own anything. God is the ruler. God is the creator of everything. And so now John saw these angels flying in the midst of heaven. And they have this gospel that is going with speed. My cousin in Jamaica told me, I watched you last night and I love that message. My cousin there in New York City, he's watching and he loved the message. This message is going with speed. I think about uh, if you listen to Faith FM around 2 o'clock, I was at my home yesterday and I heard myself preaching there and Faith FM. And hundreds of people are listening to the gospel going with speed. What are the messages of these, uh, these three angels? They have a very, very, very important message to share to humanity. Saying with a what? Loud voice, everybody. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. Let me read it again. It's going to take a little time to come on the screen. But Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7. Saying with a what, everybody? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is what? It's come and then what should you do? Worship him that make what? Heaven and what? Earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Who did it everybody? God did it. So I worship him. God created everything. So I give glory to him. Amen. I put him above everything, above myself, above money, about, above fame, above a wife. I put God first. And you have to know this power with Jesus. Come on and say amen. There is power with him. Now I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna take my time and read this again. Uh, uh, this, is very, this is very interesting. Just, I, I feel so comfortable. I can go to my bed and I can sleep. Uh, this earth was not created by the Russian's president nor the United States uh, of America president. Uh, this earth was not created by those with their nuclear bomb, the weapons of mass destruction. This earth was not created uh, 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 by those that the Bible said, wickedness in high places was created by God so I can sleep in peace. Saying with a loud voice, fear God. Fear God. And give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. What has God did it? You know, God has been, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people over the years, the century, who challenge God. These demigod that only live for 30 years and 40 years and 25 years. These demigod. Who because they hold a little, you know, a little money in the bank. Money is not God. It's not life. Challenge the great God. Because they have weapons of mass destruction. And they have soldiers who will move at their heart. They believe they can challenge the almighty. Who has given us his breath. One such is Pharaoh. Early in the year, uh, in the centuries, Pharaoh up against God you see Pharaoh see the sun as his brother and the moon as his sister and he's God and earth and when Moses went to Pharaoh and said my people God's people God wants his people to worship him Pharaoh said who is God again and then God reminded Pharaoh who he is are you listening to me them he worshiped the God of this earth the moon and the stars and God reminded him by sending ten plagues upon Egypt you all remember those plagues blood and frags and flies and, and, and boils and, and hail and, and everything else until that man was humbled. God can do that. The Bible said humble yourself. Humble yourself. Better you fall and the rock and be broken than the rock fall in you and crush you. Humble yourself. And that's what God did. And with a, with a, with a mighty hand God released his people out of Egypt. They came out of Egypt. Powerful God is powerful are you listening to me out there in the book of ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 16 they came out and uh, 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 that idolatry was still in them what they what was taught to them in egypt they brought it in the wilderness and god had was to rid it out of their system ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 16 read with me everybody the bible says and behold at the door of the temple of the lord between the what 
porch on the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east and they worship the same hear me out there God created the sun to give us light for us to walk in it not for us to worship it and they worship the what the sun towards the east that is what Pharaoh did and many of the religion today see the sun as very powerful and they pay homage to, to the S-U-N, not the S-O-N. They pay homage to the sun. And God wanted his people to understand that these are gods that setting up themselves, challenging the creation, challenging God. The sun, the S-U-N, did not create the earth. Are you listening to me out there? But not only Pharaoh, but we have uh, uh, great men like Charles Darwin, who uh, uh, promote a radical different view of creation. And his view of creation is that man for some billions of years. I told you the other night that we can, we, they always bring up to us every February, they reminded us of slavery. And then from there they go all the way to five billion years to tell us when, when, when slimy stuff crawl out of water, turn into frag, then into uh, monkeys, and then from monkeys to human beings. And folks believe that. They believe they're from animals. That's the reason why they act the way they act, certain people. But there are certain things animals will not do. Animals will, will eat grass. They won't smoke it. I know that. <laughs> I've never heard of a homosexual dog. Are you listening to me out there? You, you can give whiskey, to, you can give whiskey to, to, to cat. They will not drink it. Man, they said, was created or not created by God. They said, well, we are, from, we are from monkey. And then we get better and better every day. And watch us. I can tell you, we're getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Seeing what they're doing in, 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 in Russia and in Ukraine, how they're killing each other. Huh? We don't see dogs doing that. Cats doing that. And then, not only they challenged God with that, they said, hey, this earth came by an accident. Two solar systems collide together. And then from that, all these pieces of stuff that you see right there, then from that came earth. Listen to me, my dear brothers and sisters. We serve an intelligent God. I right, listen to me other. We serve an intelligent God. And the devil is chal challenging creation. The devil is challenging the God of creation. But thank God, God, he has some people here who are lifting up the name of Jehovah, the creator God. And then, that's not enough. We have so many religions that you don't even know which religion is the true religion. Some of them are so wide and so large and they have millions of followers. But they don't worship the God of creation. Millions of people are led astray while the Bible is here. Religion. But I thank God for Christianity. Come on and say amen. But the devil must destroy Christianity. Or he's trying to destroy Christianity. In the book of Isaiah chapter four, uh, 14 and verse 12. It showed us here where the devil now is challenging God. The devil is competing with God. The devil wants to show the world that he's God. He's the one bringing all these men claiming to be God. Telling us that we, this earth did not come by uh, an intelligent design. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 we read. How are thou what? Falling from what? Heaven, O Lucifer, son of the what? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the what? Mount of the congregation in the sides of the what? Not, and listen to this now. I will ascend above the ice of the clouds and I will be like the most high. So you see, you want to be like the most high? Huh? You see that somebody's challenging God. I told you the other night that there are certain things the devil uh, I can do that God will never do. The devil will tell lies. You know that, right? He can deceive. 
He has an advantage done here by telling lies. And so he wants to be God. And so he doesn't want nobody to know who is the creator God. And so he brought up all these things. That's why I am happy for the Bible. And I tell you every night, please read this. This is a light, powerful, come on and say amen. Very powerful. So watch this now, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. And again, we go, we go to Revelation. Revelation is reminded us who is the creator of heaven and earth. Not Lucifer, not Satan. The Bible tells us, Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Thou art what? Thou art what? Worthy, O Lord, to receive what? Glory and what? Honor and what? Power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are what? And were created. Who did it, everybody? God did it. He created all things. And so we praise him. So we give him glory. Chapter 10 and verse 6, the Bible tells us, And he swear by him that liveth forever and ever. Who created the what? Who created the heaven and the earth and the things that therein and the earth and the things that therein and the sea and the things that uh, which are, are therein and there should be time no more. Look at this. God created what? Watch this everybody. The angels swear by him that liveth forever. He said you created all things. God created all things. God created all things. And the devil is trying to destroy those who worship God. The devil is trying to destroy the worship of God. The devil doesn't want nobody to worship Jehovah God. And so he climbed down into Christianity. And he brought division among us. And so we have conflict when we should not have that. Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 reminded us. Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 reminded us. And worship him that made what? And earth and the sea and the springs of what? And the springs of water. You cannot go wrong when you put God first. If you serve God first, you cannot go wrong. God will provide for you. Care club on a thousand, it'll belong to him. You can pray and God can work a miracle. That's the God that we serve. He owns everything. Amen. He owns everything. All that we have is his. Our breath belong to him. Our job belong to him. The gold and the silver belong to him. God is the creator of all things. And so you can get on your knees at any time and you can talk to God. And God will hear you. Amen. When nobody else will, God will. That's the God that we serve. Come on and say amen. That's the God that we got. God is, a, God is mighty. God is powerful. I remember some years ago I came here and I came here with one of those uh, visa card that I got from my country where I'm coming from. I know I, uh, everything in the bank was actually, I mean, it was empty. When I go to the bank and I check my account, it, uh, the, it's about $100 in it and we know we use it up. One day I look in the car that I have and I said, you know what, I'm going to try this out. And I prayed and I go to the machine and I said, Lord, I need some money. And I placed the machine inside here, I mean the, the card inside the machine. And uh, after I pray, I got $200. That's good. I don't know if anybody, but I don't know who put it there. Well, I wanted some money the next day and I went and I said, I'm going to be more presumptuous now. I need $400. So I, I, I type in and $400 came out. I said, this is good. Listen to me, my car is supposed to expire the end of July and I pray every single day, two weeks, almost every day, I go to the machine, there's money. And as soon as my car expires, that's it, the money finish. Listen to me, silver and gold belong to him. Have you heard the story of the lady who wanted something to, in fact, she challenged God. She got on her knees and she prayed to the creator God because she knows that God said the bread belonged to him. Your bread and water shall be sure. She got up the morning and there was no bread. Water was sure enough in the top. And she, and, and she got on her knees and she prayed to the great God of creation. God, I need bread for these children. I need help 
And like some of you when you're praying, you don't pray, you don't pray in secret. You, you open your mouth loud and you shout. And she did that and some young men were passing by and they heard the lady praying for bread. And one said to the other, let's do a little trick. Let, let, let's go to the shop. Let's buy the bread. And they went and they bought the bread. And while she was praying, they threw the bread through the window and hit the lady. And when she looked, she saw bread. She said, praise the Lord for bread. And those foolish young men were out there praying, laughing, and they were laughing and said, Foolish woman, we went and we bought the bread. She said, Yeah, the devil might have bought it, but God sent it. I was praying for bread. This is bread. A cackle up on a thousand, it'll belong to him. I serve a creator God who, when you ask him for anything, he will give it to you. Before I got married, I asked the Lord for an Indian wife. Don't believe me? I asked him, I asked him everything in a wife. I said, I want this, I want that. And I, so one day I went out knocking, doing missionary work, Elder Dalot, and I went to a door and lo and behold, this Indian lady came out and I said, Lord, if I could get she for a wife, this would be good for me. I asked again. She ended up getting baptized along with all her family. And then the, the pastor said, you know what? A lot of stuff are going around and I want you all to go to that home to keep that home safe. You asked the right person, Pastor. So I went there, and after three years, we got married, and we have been together for 24 years. Listen to me. We serve a creator God. Everything belongs to him. What happened is that we take God. We, you know, we, only when things are going on all right, and when our backs are against the wall, we go everywhere, and we look for everything else before we come to the creator God. Didn't he say everything belonged to him? Why do we worry? Listen to me. They could put gas price up to $30. I'm going to still have gas in my car to drive because I serve a wonderful God. When I go to the gas pump, I don't even look at the price. I say, give me gas. And they gave me, and I put gas in my, I gave them $20 and I said, fill up my tank with $20. And I run that vehicle. Huh? Every, time I, every time I look down, I see, I see red light. I say, I'm not even looking at that. I'm driving. You know, because you know that gas is finishing. We serve a wonderful God, a merciful God. And so the, and so, and so the angel, uh, is, they are reminding us, hey, worship him that make heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. All belong to him. Come on and say amen. And so for that, I have to go back to the beginning to show you what happened in the beginning. So in the beginning, the Bible said God created. Who did it? Please, I'm trying to drill that in your head. God created in the beginning God did all of what you're seeing right here. All of this belonged to him. So watch this now. So in the beginning, God created. He, he did this. 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 Uh, uh, it might be coming up or not. I don't know. But, but he did it. Uh, uh, God created the animal, the, the, the lush vegetation. Uh, 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 the birds are flying the open firmament of heaven. And, and all of that stuff. God did it. Then when God came down to the sixth day of creation, God, God, God created man in his own image. God mold and fashion us and look at us. Broad nose and long nose and dark skin and white skin. and We are all beautiful. Come on and say amen. I told the other day, if God created this earth and there's only white people alone in this earth, it would be a ugly hurt. If there's only black people alone in this earth, it would be ugly hurt. But God created all of us and we enjoy seeing each other. I'm proud to be black. The song that I sung the other day, I didn't put the other verse in it, but the other verse said, I'm not black, but I'm a Christian. Hey, that makes a difference. Are you listening to me out there? I am a Christian. And so I have brothers and sisters from all walks of life. God did that in the beginning. Come on and say, I mean, so this is what God did. God stepped out of nothing. And then in the first day, God created light. Then God created land. And God put vegetation. Then God placed the sun and the moon and the stars in the air. Then God put birds and fishes in the sea. And then God created animal. And that same day, God created man. And God stepped down to the seventh day. And I read in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was what? It's God saying this. It was what? Very good. And the evening and the morning were the what? God said it was very good. Everything God created is good. 
I don't belittle myself. I don't look down on myself. I'm a prince. Are you listening to me out there? Because my father is a king of the universe. And you're all prince and princess. So God did that. The Bible said for everything, God saw everything that it was, it was good. And watch this now. You have to get these words. Very good. The Bible said, and the evening and the what? Morning. Where the what? Now this, 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 this is how it looked like. The, the sunset this evening. This is Bible I'm talking. In Bible, sunset this evening, we move over to another day. Not 12 o'clock. You can't change the day in, at night. You can't change from 12 to 12 and call it another day. A day must change from when the sun going down and when it gets dark, that's another day. We step over into another day. So the sun set this evening. We, this is Saturday night. This is what? I'm talking from the Bible point of view, not from what you men said. The Bible said, tonight is Saturday night. Tonight is what? Yeah, that's according to the Bible. That's according to the Bible. The day, the night come before the day. Watch this now. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. God finished everything. He looked back and said, hey, that is very good. Let me get off these things. That, that is, that is very good. What a, what a, what a, what a hurt it was before sin. Just think about it. That's why we have this hope beyond that one day we're going to see God recreate this earth. One day. And I'm looking forward for that. Come on and say amen. And on the seventh day, and on the which day? On the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which God had made. Now, I want, I want to get something right here. Now, when God finished creation, God placed his signature in creation. God did something. God left his title in creation. Hey, my name is right there. God signed his name. My title is that I'm the creator. Ownership, I own heaven and earth. It belongs to me. Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, the Bible said. And so God did, God did something on the seventh day that God did not do on the first, the second, the fourth, the fifth. You see the reason why God did this? Because there's somebody was competing with God. God has a competitor. God didn't call for him. He was competing with God. So God said, I'm going to set up earth, but I'm going to put something to remind the earth the people of earth that hey i'm the creator of heaven and earth and what god did god set up the seventh day that's why i'm saying it's more than a day you all think it's just a day when i finish you're going to see what i'm talking about it's not just a day it's not just a day watch it god did god did three things on the seventh day that he did not do on the first the second the fourth the fifth the sixth what god did on the seventh day i read genesis chapter 2 verse 3 and god did what everybody god did what everybody God blessed the seventh day and then God did what? Sanctify it because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. When you bless something, hey, I don't care. People curse me a lot, but I said, hey, you only turn in your curse on yourself because when God bless me, hey, nobody can curse me. When God bless a day, hey, nobody can curse that day because it blessed and it stayed that way. Then God said, I'm setting, this, I'm setting this day aside for a reason. I'm putting it aside. I'm putting this day aside. And so, and it, God rested. No, he was not tired while he, while he rests. He did it for a reason. Now watch this now, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm going down. When God created the earth, there were only two persons around. Two, two, two persons. Adam and Eve. Eh? I didn't read nowhere where it said they were a Jew. Adam and Eve. Now, Adam, Methuselah, Noah. Let we just put up these pictures. I don't know if they look like any of them, but 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 Adam, Methuselah, Noah, Abraham, and, and Lot and David and us should they all kept. That day holy, there's a reason why. There's a reason why they, they, they put the seventh day. There's a reason why they acknowledge the God that created Sabbath. You know why? And I'm going to show you. The Bible tells us when Abraham, I'm at Genesis chapter 26 verse 5. Because Abraham obeyed my what? Voice and kept my what? My commandments and my what? Statutes and my laws. What Abraham did? Abraham obeyed the voice of God. And listen to me. Abraham was one of the richest men back there. 
In so much that, 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 that kings brought gifts to Abraham. Well, when the children of Israel were in Egypt, the Bible said God brought them out, out of slavery. God brought them into the wilderness. And God knows that in the wilderness where they were going, there are a whole lot of, uh, what I call it now, these guys who worship idol, Eden, they were there in the wilderness and God wanted his people to be separate from them. God didn't want them to worship idols. So God said, you know what? I want to remind you constantly that there is a creator God. So in the book of Ezekiel 20 and verse 20, the Bible said God is, here's God talking now. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 20. All of my what? All of my what? Sabbath. That they shall be a what? Sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord your what? I'm setting up this day so that you will know the true God from the false gods. We got a whole lot of them. And so what God did to the children of Israel was to, was to help them from, from having their children being sacrificed to idol. As I showed you the other night, Israel got so bad that they sent their children to be burned. That's how these idols, how they operate. You have to sacrifice your children to them. You have to kill your children to please these gods. God sacrificed animals, but they sacrificed human beings. So in honoring the God of creation, you will honor, every time you think about the seventh day, you honor the God of creation. And you know the God of creation will not take human sacrifice. Watch this everybody. I'm reading Levit Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1 and 2. Read it me, everybody. This is a very powerful verse. I found this today. Uh, Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1 and 2. He shall make you know what? Idols or graven image. Neither rear you up any standing image. Neither shall he set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. And then watch the other verse that come, out, come behind it. You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. So every time they see the Sabbath, they are seeing the God of creation. And they are not seeing an idol. Are you following me out there? So watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. So, so when the children of Israel came in, and, and this is a very... Powerful verse. Second Chronicle, chapter, first Chronicle, chapter 16, verse 26 and 27. For all the gods, for all the gods of the people are what? But the Lord made what? The Lord made heavens glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. When you serve God and your home is, is singing song of praise. That's a happy home. When the community put God in the community, that's a happy community. You are happy when you serve God. Despite what is happening, you can smile even though you're feeling the pain on the inside. But you sing the clouds away because you serve a mighty God. Come on and say amen. All the gods of the people are idols. And I just put in this one in. They talk about peace. Have you watched what is happening in the news? Almost every one of these countries, India, Pakistan, uh, 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 even the, Philis, Phil, the, the Philis, Philippines, I'm going to say Philistine, the Philippines, England, America, Russia, all these countries have nuclear bombs, but at the same time they're saying, hey, we're going to have peace. How can you have peace when you have nuclear bombs? You must have somebody crazy going to touch one of those buttons one of these days. They are planning for war, and yet still they're saying peace. Hey, all the gods of this earth are idols. Jehovah God is powerful. He's powerful. Amen. So watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You have to get this. You have to get this. They were on their way, on their way to, uh, to Mount Sinai. They don't reach there as yet. They just coming out of the, just passing the Red Sea, walking, walking. And then, surprisingly, God gave them manna from above. Isn't God wonderful? God rained down bread. And they had bread enough to eat. 
Then God spoke to the children of Israel because he knew where they were going. And so in the book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 23 and 26, the Bible said, and he said unto them, this is that which the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. And to the Lord, bake that which he must bake today and boil that he must what? Boil and that which remaineth over laid up for yourselves to keep until the morning. Six days he shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Now this is not just about a day. This is about respecting the creator of heaven and earth. Every time you see the seventh day come around, you are reminded that you serve not a dead God, but a living God. You serve not a God of today. You serve a God of yesterday and today and forever. You serve a God that created all things. And so that's what it was all about. So when they came to get, when they came to Mount Sinai, God, now this is chapter 16. And I go all the way to chapter 20. In chapter 16, God reminded them about the Sabbath. Chapter 20, the Bible said God gave them 10 commandments. Watch this now, Exodus 20. And I'm going to pick them out one by one. Verse uh, 3, talk about the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, verse four, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Number three, verse seven, thou shalt not take the law of thy God name in vain. We went through these ten commandments. Number four, watch this, verse eight to eleven, and I'll read to you, Exodus 20. Remember the what? Why should you remember it? To keep it what? Why? For in six days, what do you have to get this? The reason why we keep Sabbath is because we want to remember that we serve a creator God. The Sabbath is the memorial of creation. Every time the seven day come around, that's the birthday of creation. That tells us, you know the reason why the devil doesn't like the Sabbath? Because he, he, he knows that he's a loser. He knows that. And so the devil will do everything to distract us. I'll read Six days shall thou labor and do all thy what? Work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy what? God. In it thou shalt do no work. Thou now thy son, now thy daughter, now thy manservant, now thy maidservant, now thy cattle, now the stranger within thy gates. Why? For in six days the Lord made where again? The heaven and the earth and the sea and all that therein is. And he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and all of it. What I just highlighted, I highlight some words here. And the reason why I did it, I want to show you that God put his signature in it. This is what we call God's title. His name. This is his seal. His seal. His name. The law of thy God. His title. He's the creator of heaven. His territory. Earth. And heaven belong to him. But men share it up. You can't go here and you can't go there. I want the day coming we don't have to use passport or visa. I just fly to anywhere I want to fly to. Come on and say me. I go into any uh, airspace because it belongs to God. Don't belong to man. This is his place. He, he has his seal. This is God's seal. Now watch this. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Isaiah, I'm, I'm showing the powerfulness of the Sabbath. And we, we don't worship a day, but we worship the creator. It's more than a day. Everyone, Isaiah 56, verse 6 and 7. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath, I will bring to my what? Holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of what? Pur for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. For all nations. Wrong nation. So which day is the Sabbath day? Everybody knows. Everybody knows which day is the seventh day. The day, the week starts from Sunday and it ends at what? Saturday. Everybody knows that. Huh? You see, some people have problem with, with, with the seventh day. They don't know which day is the seventh day. And if I tell them, all right, come to my home on Sabbath and I'm going to give you a million dollars. You know which day they're going to come? And Saturday. Now, the day, and you have to get this, you have to get this, you have to get this, brethren. Uh, don't, don't lose this. Revelation chapter 12, verse, verse, verse 17. Who hates God's commandments, everybody? It's not me, the devil. Watch this. And the dragon was wroth with the what? And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which what? 
keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The devil don't like God's commandments. And so he placed us to hate God's commandment. People going around and said, nobody can keep the law. And you fool around with them. And they will tell you. They locked up people for stealing. Huh? They locked up people for lying. They locked up people for committing murder. So he said, he doesn't like people who keep God's commandment. That's the devil. The devil is wrought with those who keep the commandment. But look on the flip side now. John chapter 14 and verse 15. This is Jesus speaking now. Jesus says, if he what? If he what? Wait, 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 wait. If he what? Do what? What, 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 what would the devil is doing right here? The devil, the devil is wroth with those who keep the commandments. But Christ said, if you love me now, do what? To prove that when he came here, Christ kept his father commandments. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the what? Synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to sleep. Oh, what, what, what is there? Oh, that's what he went to the synagogue to do? Because a lot of people come to church and they sleep. And some people don't come to church, they sleep. The Sabbath is not a... Uh, the, the Sabbath is a day that you celebrate the God of creation. You give him glory for what he has done. Even though sin defiled this earth. Listen to me. You, you, you need to take a drive, some of you in the city, and go all the way past Belmapan and go down. You're going all the way down to Dan Griga and look in those luscious vegetation. We still have some beautiful place here. Huh? We have some beautiful place here. Come on and say amen. Then watch this now. And he said unto them, and he said unto this is Jesus speaking again. Mark 2 verse 27. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for what? Man and not man for the Sabbath. No, God didn't have a Sabbath somewhere and didn't know what to do with it. So he said, all right, man, keep it. No, God created man first and God wanted men to have a relationship with him. So God created the Sabbath next and God gave it to man so they can have communication. So they can speak to each other. What a God we serve. I'm not talking about the king of this earth. Now, I'm not talking about the, the prime minister of this earth. I'm talking about the king of the universe. Want to have a relationship with us. Want to have a relationship with us. Want to have a relationship with us. So watch this now. Therefore, the son, of the, the son of man is what? Lord. The son of man is Lord also of the what? If you're Lord of the Sabbath, I mean, you own it. You, you know everything about it. You know how to keep it. You know what not to do on it. It's more than a day. It's more than a day. It is telling me that when I worship God on the Sabbath day, the devil doesn't like what I'm doing and he will do everything to destroy. And I'm going to prove it to you. Got a couple of minutes. So they tied him up. The night they found Jesus, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. That was, according to the Bible, Friday night. We would say Thursday night. But you go from the Bible, the night come before the day. So that was Friday night. They brought Jesus and Peter, Peter said, I don't know him. And he cursed. That was Friday night, Friday evening. When they brought Jesus before uh, Pilate, that was Friday morning. And Pilate looked at him. And Pilate said to him, you know, I have power to release, to, to, to release you. I have power. Jesus looked at him and smiled. You don't have power. If I want to escape, I could call 10,000 angels. But I put myself here willingly. I like a sheep to the slaughter. He went there. That was Friday morning. They whipped his back till it was like raw flesh. They whipped him with a thing they called cat of nine. 39 times. They whipped his back. That was Friday morning. Then they drove rust the nails through his hand and his feet and lifted the cross high in the air and dropped it in the ground. That was Friday afternoon when the thief on the cross said to him, save yourself and save us. When the one on the right said, Lord, remember me 
when you enter into paradise, when the soldier beneath the cross said, now I know this is a righteous man. When Mary faint beneath the cross and Jesus said to John, behold, your mother and mother, behold, your son. That was Friday. That was Friday. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 23 and verse 52, this man, when, when, when Jesus could not take it anymore, uh, I'm just jumping the gun right now. He said, this man went into Pilate and begged his body. But guess what the Bible tells us? Luke chapter 23 and verse 54. And that day was the preparation day and the Sabbath do what? So the day before the Sabbath, the Bible called the preparation day. That's the day he was on the cross. Dying for the world. Dying for humanity. Hey, God is wonderful. Come on and say amen. No, no, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I can't understand. Last week's Sabbath, the world acknowledged Saturday as holy day. What do you do with holy day? Well, they all ride bicycle. They all drink rum and they all have party and they do everything else. And they call it holy fry, holy Sabbath, holy Saturday, not, not holy Sabbath, holy Saturday. You see all the devil we can watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Friday. It's known by the world as what? Good Friday, but the Bible didn't say anything about that. Beneath, be, between Easter Sunday and Good Friday, you have what? Sabbath. I'm going to show you how the devil dangerous. What, what told the devil dangerous? Please, just reason with me a little. Reason with me a little. So, so nothing in the Bible says that you should acknowledge Friday as good. Right? Thank God Jesus was crucified. All right? The world acknowledged that day. Then Saturday, all hell break loose. Y'all remember that, right? People die in that day too. But then, and, and the first day of the week, everybody is what? Holy again. You see, why the, you see what the devil did? What the devil did with the middle? What the devil did with the middle? Nobody recognized. The devil didn't want nobody to know that in the middle, God did say you should remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Because if you did remember it, you'd remember that the devil is not God. And there's only one true creator God. So he keep hiding that day. He doesn't want nobody to know which day is the Sabbath. Because when you know which day is the Sabbath, you will know the true creator. Jehovah God. Jehovah God. Jehovah God. So, another truth I'm going to show you now. And I'm closing out. I'm closing out. So, and that day while he was on the cross, Jesus died. He died. He died. And they took his body down and they placed it in the tomb. But, but Genesis reminded us of something which I want to read. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were what? Call that word. Were what? Were what? Were what everybody? Finished. And all the hosts of them. I showed you in the book of St. John chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning Jesus did it. It was Jesus that created the earth. It was Jesus that created the heaven. It's Jesus that created creation. And when Jesus finished with creation, he looked at it and said, Hey, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Now when Jesus came here, he came here for one reason. And that is to buy us back, to recreate us in, in, his, own, in his own image. And when Jesus finished with creation, with, 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 with recreation, this is what he said. Watch, watch the two of them. Watch the two of them. Thus, and when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is what? Wait, wait, wait. What did he say at creation? What he said at redemption? Now, which day was creation ended? Which day creation ended? Friday. Which day redemption finished? Friday. Who created creation? Jesus. Who redeemed us? Jesus. You don't see something with this? And Friday, he finished created man. He finished recreated man. Finished by us back. Remind me of the story. Remind me of the story. A little boy built a boat. A beautiful boat. Had that boat. Brought the boat by the river. The river came down and took his boat. And while he was going, he tried to catch the boat, but he could not. Months later, he went to the city, to the town. 
And he went window shopping with his, with, his, with, his, with, his, with his mother. She went by him, but he went window shopping. And he looked, and he saw a boat look just like his boat. And he rushed into the shop, and he hugged the boat. And he was going through, and somebody said, you can't do that. He said, this is my boat. The man said, that's not your boat. You have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. He said, no, this is my boat. Crying. He went and he told his father, he said, no, son, you have, to, you have to buy the boat. He went and he worked with his father for months. He asked him, just keep that boat for him. And he came back with some money and he gave the shop man the money. And he went outside and as he went to the door, the man heard him saying, you're mine, you're mine. Two times you're mine. Once because I, twice because I bought you. You're mine, you're mine. When Christ died on the cross that day, what Christ did was to purchase us again, recreated us. And he said, it is finished. It is finished. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, it's more than a day. He didn't resurrect it the sixth day of the week. He didn't resurrect it and the Sabbath, but he, re he resurrected the first day of the week. Straight to heaven he went. Listen to me, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. The reason why... We have the conflict within Christianity is because of the devil. It's not because of my brother in the Baptist church or my sister there in the, in the church of God or my, or my cousin there in the Adventist church. The reason why we have the conflict within Christianity is because of the devil. Let us kick him out now. We can do that by using God's word. Hey, if the Bible is our foundation, then we will obey God's will. If you love me, the Bible said, keep my commandments. These three angels are flying telling us, hey... Something is about to happen. The message is going across the world. It's more than a day. So I keep the Sabbath not because it's a day. I keep the Sabbath because it's God's memorial of creation. It's the reason why I keep the Sabbath. I don't keep it because I'm looking. A day cannot save me. If you only keep a day, you're going to hell. Because then you'll be worshiping idol. We worship God on the Sabbath. Because God said so. Amen. God tells us to do that. So we don't have a player. I want to say to you, my dear brothers and sisters and friends, if you love Jesus, you will do likewise. You'll give him glory. You'll give him praise. I'm going to come down and you're going to sing for me. But I'm just going to make, I'm, I'm just, as I, as I normally do, as I normally do, I want to, I want to encourage somebody. I want to encourage somebody. I know you, I know you take those cards and I know you sign them up. But tomorrow, 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 God is calling his people. He's calling his people to follow him. Many of you watch the baptism. And Wednesday evening, you saw many people gave their all to Jesus in baptism. Some of you watch and say, you know what, I want to do likewise. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender. Tonight I want to do as I always do. I want, I want, I want, to, I want to invite somebody who you have challenges and you want God to give you freedom. You want God to give you power. You want God to give you the strength so you can walk the walk and talk the talk. I'm going to ask if that's your desire to stand with me tonight. Stand with me, everybody. Stand with me tonight. I want to encourage you to stand with me tonight. Stand with me tonight. And you can click on the chat right there. Scan the QR code and you if you want you can give us a call tomorrow all those who are watching us online we're having a baptismal service here wherever you are in the country come to bird's eye if you want to know where we are I think the number will be up on the screen you can call and you can come here but tonight I want to see someone tonight who want to say Lord I love you and I want to keep your commandments I may have challenges but I want to keep your commandments I want to put you first. I want to put you first. I want to pray with somebody like that tonight. Is there anybody like that tonight? Is there anyone like that tonight? I want to pray with somebody like that tonight. I want to pray with somebody. I want to pray with. A, I want. I want to pray with a young man. I want to pray. I want to pray with somebody who you have your challenge. God, God, see your challenges, and He want to give you victory. He want to give you victory. I want to give you victory. Praise God. Is there anybody else I want to pray with you? I'm about to close, but I don't want to close without not praying for you. I don't want to close and not prove it out, not pray. I want you to put God first because when you put God first, He from that He will take care of you. He will take care of your home. He will take care of your wants. He will take care of your needs. 
God is able. God is able and God is capable to do the impossible. I want to pray with you before I leave. I see them coming. I want to pray with you. Is there somebody else? You may have been here before, but I want to pray with you again. I want to pray with you again. Remember, God is not an idol. He's living, he's breathing, he's kicking. He owns the universe. Everything is his. Everything you look at belong to him. You shouldn't have one poor person on this earth, but because of selfishness, because of selfishness. But one day, God will take from the wicked and God will give it to you. He will. Heaven will be a wonderful place. Come, I want to pray. Is there somebody else? You want to obey God's will? You want to obey His commands? All His commands. Tomorrow. Tomorrow the water will be troubled. We'll be having baptismal service. Here tomorrow. I know many of you signed up to go all the way with Jesus and we are happy for you. We spoke to some of you. We are happy. We wanna, I want to invite you all to come down also. I want to pray with you. I see all these young men. Young strong men. Now I'm, I'm going to ask my workers. I want you to look at all those who came to the altar. If they have not received one of those decision cards, you need to give them their decision card. I see the brother coming. I see the sister coming. I'm coming right here. And I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying that everybody can see what we Tomorrow, no matter what happened, if you don't have a right to come here, get a number. Before you leave here, the usher will give you a number. And we will give you a ride. But come, share the Sabbath with us. Share the Sabbath with us. Share the Sabbath with us. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Is there anybody else? It's more than a day. 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 When I ask to bow your heads and close your eyes. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Mr. President, I have one of my good elder from Central and I want him to pray for us today. I want to ask Elder Dallard, I want to invite you as a young man. And he's going to be praying for all those who came to the altar tonight. I want to ask him to lift you all up. Lift you all up in prayer. Is there anybody else? If there's anybody else and you're standing right here, I want to invite you just to come. Give your heart to Jesus. He will give his father's kingdom. I'm going to ask to bow your heads and close your eyes. And lift your thoughts heavenward. As we pray. Father, this evening we are here in your presence. On the Sabbath day, the day that you have created and set aside for us to worship you. For us to rest. For us to fellowship with each other. Dear Father, your people have come here this evening, some just to acknowledge you as God. As they are here because they are in need of you, they are in need of your saving grace. They are fighting battles and they are struggling and they can't seem to overcome. So they have come this evening just to receive a touch from you. They are reaching out and stretching to touch your garment, dear Father. And you say if you reach out in faith, that you will heal. You will heal their emotional sickness. Dear Father, you will heal the brokenness that is inside them. You will forgive sins, dear Father. You will rebuild walls that were torn down by the enemy because you are God you are the creator and you can recreate whatever the devil has torn down and torn apart families are being torn apart dear God churches are being torn apart it's like pastor said because of Satan so as we are acknowledging you this evening as we've come before you, we ask that you give us the strength to overcome. We are weak and we need your strength. We need your arm to reach out and pick us up. You chase after us and all you're asking us to do is to just turn around and you're waiting with arms wide open. So Father, as we're here this evening, hear our prayers, dear God, and give us the desire of our hearts. 
we desire a closer relationship with you we desire for our church to be one we desire our families to be united and most of all Lord we desire salvation for each other so we ask that you continue to bless this these meetings night after night continue to bless pastor Campbell as you speak through him mightily dear God there isn't a person here who can leave this evening and say that they have not been touched because your spirit was speaking this evening thank you father for being a wonderful God to us so whatever our need are this evening hear us dear God and answer according to your will in Christ's name Amen. Thank you very much, Ella. Before you go, tomorrow when you're coming, we want all of you to come. Dress as you, whatever you have, just wear it. Wear whatever you have. Come. Just put a change of garment in a bag. We have robes here that can fit any one of you. In other words, decide to give your life to Jesus. You will not lose. You will never lose. You will gain. You will gain. And so we're encouraging those who came to the altar who have not yet given your heart to Jesus, decide to do that. If you have not written up a, a card, I'm going to ask you to take one before you leave and you can write up one of them so we can get your name and we can call you. Have a good evening, everybody, and we see you tomorrow morning. We start here at 9 o'clock, Mr. President. Yes, sir. And now you know. So come on out tomorrow. Come prepared. Come keep God's Sabbath day. Be a part of the celebration. The buses run as usual at 8 in the morning, 8.30. You make sure you're on the bus and you be here because God is going to do wonderful things for you tomorrow. Please fill out your card, turn it into the ushers, and as we prepare for the baptism... Okay, the buses begin to run at 8 o'clock, I'm being told. All right? So make sure you're ready. Bright and early, put on your whatever it is and come on out and come and be blessed. Okay? Okay, we came to an end of this streaming for tonight. God put a sign on creation based on that fact. It is more than a day. The Sabbath was made for men to have a relationship with God. And based on that, it's more than a day. Thank you for watching. And we invite you for tomorrow morning by night to be with us on the same channel, on the same platform for Revelation Hope Beyond. As a non-profit organization, the Adventist Television Network solely relies on your financial support. By partnering with us through a monthly donation, you will help us to continue to fulfill the mission in taking the gospel into all the world. For more information, please call 613-9351 or email us at atnfin cbm.beliesunion.org Thank you for your prayers and support of the ATN ministry and together we may hasten the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ.